G'day family and welcome to our online service. Man, it's such an honor and privilege to have you with us today. So while you're here, why don't you follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and check out some of the other amazing content that we have. And while we're on the content, thank you so much for your generosity in this season. It's because of your generosity that you've empowered us and equipped us to be able to do God's ministry, whether it be in Pochestrum, Van Abel, and Paris, and reach people all over the world. We want to say thank you so much. So let me pray while, before we get into the Word today. Lord, I thank you that you prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for the Word that we're about to receive today. Lord, let us be open to hear your voice. Let us be sensitive to hear what you have to say for us today. I thank you and we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Willem. Take it away for us. Good day and welcome to week two of our series called Voices. What a powerful and inspirational message we had last week from Peter Coffey. And I want to uh, encourage you to go back and watch it. And it's really going to bless you. As I think each one of these sermons are going to be a blessing. Now I want to welcome you today. And I, I believe that this time that we're going to have in the Word is going to be inspiring. It's going to touch your life. And it's going to clarify how to hear God's voice. Let's start by praying. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. And thank you, Lord, for the ability to share your word. Now, Lord, I pray for everyone that's hearing that you will touch their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, this is very practical what I want to share with you today. And I actually want to share how to discern between the different voices we hear. What type of voices do we get? And how do we discern between different voices? Now in Job chapter 21 verse 2 it says, Keep listening to my words and let this be your comfort. Job goes on in chapter 7 verse 17 says, What is a man that you make so much of him that you set your heart on him? Visit him every morning and test him every moment. See, God is so interested in relationship with us. The mighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, is urging, wanting to have a relationship with each one of us. And so it's hard to know someone if you don't know their voice. Have you ever been in a, a crowd and, or maybe a, a sports match? And it's, people are roaring and, and there's lots of sounds. I remember many years ago when we had a 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Many of my American friends were like, man, do you have a problem with bees? When we switch on our televisions, it's like this bee sound. We can't get it out. We don't know what is happening. What's the problem? Is it, is it a plague of bees? And that was just a bit of zealous people blowing the vuvuzelas and everybody trying to adjust the television cameras. Now, can you imagine playing soccer or playing rugby and you, you, you're on the field and there's all these noises. How do you hear your teammates? How do you hear the referee? You hear it because you are toned into that. The whistle that the referee uses is something that, that you're used to hear. And today I want to start off is we need to listen to the whistle. We need to listen to hear the shepherd's voice. And I'm going to read quite a portion of scripture, but I trust God, as you read with me, it will really bless you. It's a well-known portion. It's in the Gospel of Luke, and we're going to read from chapter 10. Now, I know some of parts of this you know, but let me start by reading. I'm going to read out of the message uh, translation. It says, verse 1, let me set before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through a fence of a sheep pen, instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good. He's a cheap rustler. He's a sheep rustler. So it means he's a thief. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him and the sheep recognize his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow him because they are familiar with his voice. They don't follow a stranger's voice, but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. 
So he tried again. So I will be explicit, explicit there. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Steep stealers. Every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who go, goes through me will be cared for, will be freely go in and out and find pasture. And then this well-known verse verse 10 says, A thief is only there to steal, kill and destroy. But I came so that they can have real and eternal life. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. The sheep means nothing to him. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. In this story, Jesus is using sheep, which is in comparison who we are. If we know the shepherd, in this case God's voice, we will recognize when when is the shepherd coming into the uh, place where we are at? So there are many voices that we hear every day. These voices cluster themselves basically in two groups. I will call these groups godly voices and evil voices. These voices, voices from the shepherds and voices from strangers, are, are voices that gather or that scatters respectively. The main difference between these voices are the character modes. Let me, let me give you a comparison. Uh, godly voice and shepherd lead you. But evil voices, strangers, will push you. A godly voice will reaffirm you. But an evil voice will break you. A godly voice will refresh you. But an evil voice will drain you. A godly voice will calm you. But an evil voice will oppress you. A godly voice will comfort you, but an evil voice, a strange voice, will bring worries and aggravates you. A godly voice will strengthen you. An evil, strange voice will question you. So how do we know what's the difference? We need to discover what, when the shepherd is speaking, we need to listen to his voice. So let's get to point two. What is the difference between these different voices? Basically, I said it's in two categories, but if you want to say what mainly voices do you, do you hear on a daily basis or should hear on a daily basis, is godly voices, personal voices, human voices, evil voices, and the voices of the world. In John 1 verse 3, remember what he said. He says, the gatekeeper opens the gate to him and the sheep recognize his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them and they follow because they are familiar to his voice. Now we have go through thousands of choices that we need to make daily. Some of them are short-term decisions. Some of them are long-term decisions. All these choices we need to make. Uh, and when you make those choices, you need sometimes someone you can phone, someone you can speak to, someone you can trust who's going to help you. If you're making a big investment, you need advice. If you're, you're in a place where you're making a life choice, maybe you want to get married and you're not sure, is this the right person or not? That's when you, you need advice. And so of all these advice, all these things, many times fear becomes the biggest voice. Because of fear, we sometimes miss some of the best God-given opportunities. So God is not a spirit of fear, but His Spirit brings love, kindness, and well-being in your life. You see, the shepherd's voice will gather sheep and call them closer. Then the shepherd will give them guidance, direction, and conviction. And the sheep will follow Him because they know His voice. Human decisions are controlled by our own will. If we spend enough time with the shepherd to know his voice, we will be able to identify the voices of strangers. You see, our intimate relationship with God can only thrive and go deeper by spending time with Him. And I really think, how do we do it? And we can explain 
through this series more how we do it. I think it starts by making sure that all other noises are, are closed. When you read the Bible on your app, make sure you put your notifications off. Because you will, you will be interested while you read. There's a lot of WhatsApps and text messages and emails and push notifications that come through. Other things is looking suddenly for your attention. So put it on silent. Put it on do not disturb. And then read the word. When you want to hear God's voice, find a quiet place, a place where there's not a lot of noise. And say, Lord, I want to hear your voice more clearly. In the middle of noise, it's very difficult to hear a loved one's voice. And I really think, I really think this is so important, that as we grow more deeper with God, we'll know how His voice sounds. But I'm going to give you a few things and pointers where you know it's not God's voice, so that you know when it is God's voice. So our intimate relation with Him can only thrive as we go deeper by spending time with Him. Don't allow the voices of strangers to shepherd you to evil and wrong destinations. Jesus himself said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now sometimes I see with conspiracy theories, and I see with all these things that we get on WhatsApp stories, that people so want to place before God that it's His plan to bring the coronavirus in our midst and bring this pandemic in our world and He wants to wipe out the world and clean the world. God is a God of life. That's God's heart. And God's heart is for you to experience life and life in abundance. So we can only become familiar with this voice by spending time with this voice. Jesus refers to himself as one who stands at the door of our hearts, knocking and waiting for us to open. This shows that he's not trying to burst in and, and without permission coming in. No, he's knocking. He's very polite. He will come. If it's a thief, they won't notify you they are there. They will try and sneak in before you are there and come to steal and kill to destroy. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Do you recognize his voice? Have you ever opened the door of your heart to his knocking? Can you hear his voice calling? Can you distinguish between what's a shepherd's voice or a stranger's voice? Well, you don't need to wait. You're welcome to pray right now with me. And we're going to just pause in this message, but pray right now together with me. If you want to say, I want to invite you. So pray, pray. If your family is there, just pray with me. Father, I'm so glad you're a good shepherd. I'm grateful that your heart is to gather and not to scatter. To guide rather than to confuse, Lord. I want to open my heart to your voice and welcome you inside. Forgive me for not spending enough time with your voice. I repent of being slothful, and rebellious in my time management. Help me to be dis disciplined in spending more time with you. Amen. Just pray that prayer and invite him to come because he wants to speak to you. Now the third and last point is this. Have you ever played as a kid the game Knock Knock? You know, knock, knock, who's there? It's not just the jokes, but that, that knocking at your friend's doors and then you, you hide and you wait till they open and then, uh, uh, and then you go to the next door. Now, today in our lives, it's, it's dangerous to do it because people's places are, are secured. There's security guards, there's dogs, there's everything. I don't think that's a game that people play. That's why we only have knock-knock jokes and not knock-knock games anymore. But as children, I think, they still sometimes do it with their brothers and siblings, does it with brothers and sisters, and go knock on a door and then run away and, and have a big chuckle if, if someone opens and don't know who they is. But if you look at knowing who knocks on the door of our lives and who's ringing the bell to have access, 
becomes something serious. Nowadays, we have security fences, guards, cameras, and all kinds of technology just to defend our safety. People buy houses in security estates, invest in expensive protection. The importance of keeping the danger out away from our private space has become in an enormous industry. Why? Almost it's not difficult. It's because safety and protection are important. And because there's an enemy that wants to come in to kill and destroy. Wants to kill us, our lives. And we have to keep out the bad and protect the good. If this is good, good and true in the physical, how much more in the spiritual? We have to distinguish between the different voices to protect ourselves from deception and becoming lost. Voices play a critical role in the arsenal of the enemy in attacking us. So how do I get to a place where I invite God's voice more in my life? Well, honestly, by spending time in His Word. Romans 10, 17 says, Then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We've said it many times. So fear comes to you by hearing and hearing the voice of the enemy. So how do I get this faith? Romans 10, 8 says, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That's the word of faith that we preach. Jeremiah says, the heart of man is deceitful in all his ways. Some people say, well, I just share what is in my heart. Make sure that you don't put rubbish inside. Make sure you put in good things inside. Because out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will flow over. And it's in that place where I say, let me have a daily devotional time. A time when I listen or read the Word. Because through that, God can speak through His Word. Let me have a daily time of prayer. Let me utilize the times that are sort of hang time, walking time, driving time. When I use those times and switch off my radio, switch off my iPod, and just listen. Lord, what do you want to say? Knowing this shepherd intimately will not happen if you don't know his voice. I want to close with this. So how do you distinguish between these voices? I want to use this example of a robot, of traffic lights. If, if traffic lights can be described in the following, red, orange, and green, or red, yellow, and green, depending where you're living. When it's a red light, it will be a scratcher object. It means to stop. When red light comes on in our hearts, we can recognize it because it feels hot, scratchy, and has a yucky feeling inside. So you want to say something, you feel feeling hot? No. You want to go somewhere, and people say you need to go, you feel no. That's where you need to have a strong conviction to say, no, I, I can't go. Many times I had to cancel some trips and things, which I really had a conviction. God spoke to me, don't go. Change the way you're traveling. Extend your stay. Make it earlier. Just different things I felt the Lord spoke to me about. The second thing is, when it's a green light, it's a soft object. Other times when green lights come into our lives, onto our spirits, when that happens, the impressions we get inside is peaceful. So may the peace of God, the nothing missing, completeness, wholeness, restoration, restoration and restitution be governing your heart. When you have a peaceful moment, it's a good time to make a decision. When you have the yellow, orange light, there's a question mark. It's just, there's a big caution in our spirit. It means slow down, be careful. The Holy Spirit is trying to get our attention or just to be alert. You need to think and pray before going on. And so I hope this helped you. If you want to dis distinguish between the different types of voices you get, invite the voice of God into your life. Now, may God bless you. May you enjoy this series so much that you will listen to it and you will share it and you will think about it. And as you spend time with the Word of God, may His voice become the clearest voice of all. So that it's like on a sports field, 
that you, within all the noise from the outside, you're able to hear His voice. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You. Lord, You are so true. Thank You, Lord. You want to spend time with each one of us. I thank You, Lord, for each of the listeners that will be able to listen to Your voice, to hear Your voice, hear the shepherd's voice. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Willem, for that amazing inspiration. You know, there's so many different voices, it's almost like radio waves. But this week, let us choose to tune into God's voice, to choose to listen specifically for God's voice. Because, man, there's so much wisdom, there's so much more that we can reach and achieve when we tune into what God is saying for us right now, when we choose to listen to His voice above all the others. Family, if this was your first time watching one of our online services, or if you know of someone that needs this, why don't you share the word right now? Encourage someone else. Maybe there's someone that needs this word today. And just on that, if you want to make contact with us, if this is the first time that you heard about Jesus, if you want to join one of our connect groups, or if you just want someone to pray with you, send us a message right now. The info is available on the screen, and there's someone in the comments right now that would love to pray and minister with you. Family, be blessed, and we'll see each other the next time.